In every season of your life, there is wonder to be found, okay? There's something that God is doing in your life through you in every season. And so we have some different seasons up here. You can see there's different ages, different backgrounds, okay, that are going to be able to speak to what God is doing in their season and maybe what he's done in the past. And can I tell you, yesterday's wonder It may not be today's wonder, and today's wonder may not be tomorrow's wonder. God is always doing a new thing. And so, what we're going to start with, each of you have your mic. Yes, we're good? Okay, here's how we're going to, we're just going to go right down. Just introduce yourself, and why don't you tell the ladies very quickly about where you are currently in your season, and where you're walking in the wonder years. Yeah. You know, that's a hard question, because I've had a lot of seasons, ladies, just so you know. (laughs) Right now in this season, uh, I actually pastor Church Without Walls in Lumberton, and um, I've already kind of been introduced, so we're going to skip all that. And I also uh, have the honor of having a counseling office now for about 20 years, and so we're allowed to minister to every problem that anybody has, basically. And so it has been a wonder in my life. That's going to make me cry. It's been such a wonder. And um, God just wants us to help each other, you know? That's what it's all about. So in this season of pastoring, uh, we're in a wonderful moment in time because we are about to build a new church, and we are super excited about that. Give God glory. Amen. And so we are pumped, and uh, we're changing our name to Abba's House. And so we're super excited about that because all of our houses are our Abba's, right? All of them. So it has been a wonderful season in this season of my life. But you know, all of them have wonder and hold wonder. We just have to be present to feel that wonder. That's fantastic. (laughs) All right. Did y'all take notes on that one? That was just the introduction. Jeannie, can you tell us about your current wonder? How am I supposed to follow that? You just, wow. (laughs) Um, I'm Jeannie Martinez, and right now I am the, okay, hi. (laughs) Right now I am um, the program director of a women's um, drug treatment center, and um, I also am the um, Celebrate Recovery ministry leader for One City Church. Yeah. So the the wonder in my year is just, um, if we're talking kingdom talk, then I am a light in the darkness. That's what I do. That's amazing. Chris Lynn, come on. What you got? Um, hi, my name is Chris Lynn. I am um, by, an occupational therapist by career. And right now, my family and I is interested in last night's message from um, Ms. Hurst was just speaking directly to us because my family and I are in a, uh, what you call that, of uh, the valley part. And, um, but despite that valley, he's showing us a glimpse of that wonder that's to come. And um, we're in a season of hope and just um, holding on to that hope because that's our theme for this year at One City Church is hope, sharing hope. And it's that is an anchor for us. And I'm just excited to see what's to come. So y'all will see my wonder years for sure. <laughs> All right, Julia. Hey, girl. I'm Julia Miranda. I'm 14 years old, and uh, I've done a lot for my age, I think. I'm a published author and a public speaker, and I've been in many leadership positions. Yeah, make some noise for that. And my wonder's just beginning. I'm just starting to figure out who I am and what part I play in God's kingdom. And I think it's really exceptional because my wonder is growth. I'm in this growing season. I'm in this season of watching my mom fall out on the floor. Um, I'm in this season of growth and growing with young women around me and growing with the people around me and experiencing things. I'm in this wondrous experience season. And I think that is really my wonder so far. <laughs> Michelle, how you go? How you gonna follow that? I mean, I can't. That's not fair. This is my niece, guys. I'm over here like, don't cry in public. Don't do it. <clears throat> my sister is crying enough for us out there. Well, did you hear your baby? Okay. Uh. All right. Um, that's my niece. Sorry. Hey, everybody. My name is Michelle. Um, 
Wow. So this is kind of an interesting, like where we're at in our season. So my husband, Cody and I, we've got three kids and we actually, in the last couple of years, just transitioned out of uh, being on staff at a church in Kansas city. We moved about 14 hours straight South to San Antonio, Texas. Come on, Texas. Let's go. Um, and we are actually uh, starting a church. So we are in the season of building. Um, not only building church, building community, um, building his kingdom personally, and also we decided to take on a giant role and started building houses. So, and when I say building houses, we literally looked at each other and we were like, okay, hear me out. What if we lived in a tiny home that we build and then we build like three other ones and we like rent them out and do all this thing. And we're like, have you built before? My husband's like, no. He's like, have you built four? I'm like, no. So let's not build one. Let's build like four. So that's where we're at. We're literally in, as I speak on the phone with, with, uh, the Amish because they're Amish yeah, and septic go Jesus. We pray for septic in Jesus name. So anyway, we are in a season of, of building and it is intense. And it is hard work, but it is the best work we have ever done. Yeah. That's incredible. Make some noise for this panel, y'all. Now, I have, I have a sneaky feeling that a lot of you probably heard your season being represented up here. You thought, okay, that's me. I'm in that season. I'm, in, I'm stretched. I'm growing. I'm building. All right? So I, have, I really just have two questions, okay? Because we have an incredible session that's coming up with an amazing speaker. And so... Um, but we need to hear from the ladies in the house, okay? And so I have really just two questions. And my, my thought is we don't all have to answer both questions. But if you don't answer the first question, you get to answer the second question. So think when I ask this, and if you want, just say, I'm going to take this one. Uh, my, first, my first question, which I'll just remember because my phone has locked and it doesn't recognize me, is, is there any time that you can look back, right? Because oftentimes we maybe, you even mentioned this, recognizing the wonder and where we are right now. Um, is there maybe a season of your life, and this is a question for any of you guys, that you can lack, look back, and you know, hindsight is 2020. And hindsight, you look back and you go, oh, that's what God was up to. Oh, that season was important. In hindsight, is there somewhere that you see wonder where you didn't see it before? I will. Um, so my season is is um, it is particularly for for my girls over here because there was a season. <laughs> There was a season where I was, I was walking in the darkness and I never thought that I was going to get out of the darkness. No matter what I did, no matter if I ran, walked, crawled, laid down and cried, I never thought that that darkness was going to go away. But from looking at it now, what I know now is that every single step I took and every lesson that I learned led me to this moment right now. And so you just have to keep going and, and no matter what. But no matter what, what you're going through, um, you just have to know that it's always going to be temporary. And so I really wish that I would have um, paid more attention to um, building and growing. Yeah. I wish I would have paid more attention to that instead of um, being hard on myself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What I think is incredible, yeah, give it up. You just said, you, in hindsight, you look back to a season when you were in darkness. But earlier, you said the season you're in now is being a light into darkness. So if you didn't catch that, the very season you are in right now that might be very difficult is the season that you're going to be able to address in somebody else's life later. So you have to just grin and you just got to hang on and get through that because God is going to use the thing that the enemy tried to take you out with. He's going to use that thing to bring everybody out with you. You know what I'm saying? That's what I hear you saying. Uh, Julia, you had your hand up. Uh, so I went through a season where I I've grown up in a home with a father who's been in and out of the picture. And a lot of you know that, some of you don't, but I think my growth period was having my mom. Like I didn't realize it at the time, but when I was in complete disarray, she was my rock. She was the one who was like, I, and when I was ticked off at God because I didn't know what the heck was happening, where's my real dad or where's my, where's my dad? She, she didn't push faith onto me. She didn't try and make, make it seem light. But she, she said, okay, this is a you and God thing. And now I can look back 
knowing where I am with God and knowing how strong of a relationship I have with him, I can look back saying, I have a story for this. Like I have a, I have a testimony even at my young age. I'm not even done living life and I've barely even started, but I have a testimony of something that I had no control over. I had no control over being abandoned. I had no control over being in complete bankruptcy, but I have control over the testimony and the story that I tell. And that is a wonder to me. I won't drop the mic because I don't want to have to pay for it. Pastor Lori, that was a mic drop moment. Thank you, Julia. I just want to kind of give a little spin on wonder that sometimes we take the little things for granted. And I know there's a lot of young moms in the crowd. And you know what? It's that wonder when you look in that face of that child or in that grandchild's face. And as moms, we're all busy. I see so many women here in ministry, and you're juggling 9,000 things. But you know when that two-year-old's in the middle of that temper tantrum, just step back and look at them and be reminded that that's not always going to be happening. And in that moment, take in the wonder and don't miss a detail so that when they're 20 or 30, you can remind them of how silly they looked that day on the floor, you know? But it's that wonder of that child and if, if I have a hindsight, it's rushing too much through life, and ministry calls us to rush, sadly, and the kingdom does too. Hey, we can all be real, right? But just slow down and don't take any of those moments with your children or your grandchildren for granted. That's beautiful. Um, one of the seasons in our lives that... Um, my husband and I faced was when we had to move out of Houston to Illinois and we came from a season where um, I was I was working and you know also just started my grad, grad school and he was still in school and we had to move over to Illinois far away from family we were the only ones there and I got pregnant and I couldn't work I started I started my program got a lot um, harder because the more I advanced in the course, it got harder and I had to make several travels and it got to a point where we could barely pay our bills. And um, I remember, I can never forget that image. My husband and I were making our bed and he's like, do you think God will be mad at us if we don't pay our tithe this month? I mean, we can barely make rent. And I remember with my big belly, and I'm like, honey, we're going to have to trust him that in as much as we don't have anything in our account, we're still faithful enough to pay our tithe. And now that I look back at it, I'm like, Oh my gosh, how did we make it through? I remember going from my graduation in Tennessee, we could not even check into the hotel because we didn't have credit card or anything anywhere. And I remember calling, I was in the car, I, I had my little, um, my now six-year-old, he was probably six months at that time in the car, and I called Chase, I said, please, I am stranded, I need help, I need y'all to, you know, fund me, or give me a little bit extra money so I can check into the hotel, and I've never had a good relationship with Chase, and I don't know if anybody's a Chase representative here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing personal, but I tell you, whoever that lady was was an angel because she increased my um, temporarily just for that time, and we were able to go and get into the hotel. Now, we didn't have our money in the bank, but I know, looking back, is telling, you know, God provided for yeah all our needs. We, we were never sent out. We were never kicked out of our apartments. I mean, I, I, I mean, if there's any color darker than red, we were that color on our accounts. But when I tell you now, whatever, even in this season that we're going through, is like, I know I can, I've said, God, you're the God of Encore. You've done it before. I know you can do it. And that's what I'm able to hold on to. That's incredible. Well, Michelle, you might as well. You want to take a crack at it? What, what was the question one more time? I have, some th I have lots of things to say, but what was the exact Wonder question? Wonder in hindsight <laughs> that you didn't see then, yeah. but you can see it clearly now. <clears throat> I think, truthfully, having whew, 
a deep well of gratitude um, is something that I look back on. And I, I remember in really hard seasons where literally we did not know what the next day holds. Um, we would have to look at each other and be like, okay, joy is a choice. It's not an emotion. It's not something that we, you know, we, well, if I've got it, I've got it. No, it's a choice. And so we would choose joy. I even like tattooed it on my finger because it was such a serious season we were in. I was like, I need a reminder like right here, like on my hand that I'm going to choose joy. Um, And looking back in those moments, I look back and I only actually remember the joy. Um, I think about the things that, and like my sister knows a lot of this stuff, but we have gone through a lot of things in the last couple of years as a family. And I look back and I would just look at my husband and I would be like, Jesus will be glorified in our family. He'll be glorified in our life. We are healthy. We are together. And whatever we do, we're going to do it with joy and we're going to do it with gratitude. And I think looking back, even though there were some wild things that happened, because life is wild and it's messy, um, but Jesus at the center, and he's right there in the middle of it all. And so I think holding on and fighting for gratitude, even with our kids, we'll turn around and there would be something going on and be like, give me three things you're grateful for right now, right now. And they even know the drill. The moment the complaining starts to set in, we're like, whoop, three things, grateful for, go. And I mean, it's quick. It's like off the top. I'm grateful for food. I had food today. Thank you, Jesus. I'm grateful for community and for my family and for shoes and for the air, the achy Jesus for air conditioning. Praise the name of the Lord. Like just gratitude. And it starts to, you start to fill up a bank account of gratitude. And when I need to make a withdrawal, it's easy. The more I put in, the easier it is to pull out. And so just looking back on those moments that I know that it was an effort and it was a choice that we had to make holding on to gratitude and fighting for joy, I, I look back and those are the moments that actually pop out to our family the, the strongest. That's incredible. That's incredible. So I love that you said this too because it takes us really, like you're starting to answer and you as well, the next question that I have, which is for the women in this room who might be in a season where they feel like, I don't understand why I'm in, I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know why I'm still single. I don't know why these kids throw up on me every day. I don't know why, you know, like I've been there too. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why my marriage is like this. I don't know why this season is still like this. Um, what would you say? I think gratitude is a fantastic, like that just crosses over and to slow down, right. And pay attention and ask God to show you the wonder. Is there any other advice you would give the ladies in this room who might be in a season where wonder seems to be obscured from their vision and they can't quite figure out why and what is God doing in this season? Is there any advice that you would give to them? Um, What comes to mind right now is to just hold on to his word. I know it sounds very vague, but it's something you have to find. There's some, there is a word there for everybody and hold on to him. The Bible said, test me and see, you know, you have to hold him to, you know, to hold him accountable. And God is a faithful God. He will never leave you. Neither will he forsake you. That's actually one of our, you know, motto at home. It's like, we know God is faithful. He will not leave us, not forsake us. And that's our confidence. Yes. That's amazing. That's great. Um, I think when you said slow down, I, I could also hear be still, but I also hear um, right now we're just rising up to be a bunch of esters. Mm-hmm. That's just what that's just what it is. And so I think that being still in the moment and and knowing that the things that you're going through, the valleys and the scars, those are your credentials for you to keep on moving and uh, to be the esters to rise others up yeah. when it's all said and done. So. I think so many times, um, one of the things I guess that I hear people say is, I don't know what I'm here for, or I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Many times you're doing already what you're supposed to be doing. You just need to be in the midst of what you're doing and then allow the Lord to use that for whatever his destiny and calling and purpose on your life is. I remember, um, and I'm going to keep this real brief, but early on in my life, uh, and just a a real quick piece of a testimony, 
very dysfunctional family, 25, found my way to a counselor's office. All I wanted was to be better. All I wanted was to get help. Little did I have any idea at 25 years old that God would then allow me to not only become a counselor, but to have other counselors that work for me and for us to have full schedules pretty much all week. And so you may not see it in hindsight, right? And when you're there, sometimes it's hard and you can't really see the future. The good news is you don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to. You just stay in God's footprints and he's going to take you to where he wants you to be. But enjoy that journey so there can be wonderment all along the way. He'll do it. He can do it. He's done it before, right? He'll do it again. Amen. That's fantastic. I was actually like itching once we got into this. I thought I wrote these questions and thoughts and then I realized maybe you don't see it while you're in the season and that's okay. It's all right if you don't know what this season is for because your heavenly father, he is the author and the finisher of your faith. So if you can be grateful and, and hold on to his word and be patient and trust, God will show you what it's for when it's time for you to see it. Because guess what? I bet you if he told you right now what you're gonna be doing, you might mess this whole thing up. <laughs> you might think, oh, I'm gonna be doing what? Well, then let me just go ahead. I'm, I need to move on up. And he's like, just go through the season. Because what do seasons do, right? The, uh, we don't like it, but fall comes and the, the trees start to lose their leaves. And so that's not a fun season. And in the winter, things die. That's not a fun season. But if stuff doesn't die, you know, like if the bugs and stuff don't go away. And y'all have big mosquitoes down here. Y'all have nasty bugs. Can you imagine if you didn't have a season where those bugs were gone? Can you imagine what your spring would be like? Can you imagine if some stuff didn't die? You would be overtaken in the spring with the good and the bad. And so every season is valuable and it's important. I just, I had an itch, I had to say it. Um, okay, I have a final question. Julia, this one is for you because I don't know that there's a lot of 14 year olds in the room right now. Um, and I thought, you know, oftentimes uh, we don't know what to tell these little girls. Well, what am I gonna do with you besides snatch you by your hair and tell you get over here right now, okay? My daughter is one of Julia's best friends and so I know what it's like to have a beautiful, she's a beautiful girl, beautiful young woman who's growing and learning who she is. Um, and so, and I also know that there's like a massive attack against your age group as far as kind of being okay with maybe being in obscurity in a season or not quite knowing who you are, but not second guessing that, well, maybe I'm a little bit of everything or maybe I'm this, right? Because there's a lot of options now. And I just think that maybe because you're that age, you could give us in the room, and I feel like you're kind of wise, Julia. I didn't expect everything to come out of you like it did, but you just poured out wisdom. I'd love for you to give us some wisdom and some advice on what we could say as mamas, grandmamas, aunties, internet aunties, all these things, to the young ladies in our lives as they are walking through the wonder years. Yeah, um, okay. I really think, like at our age, it's a whole growing pain. Everything is a growing pain. Especially when you're a female, it's just all growing pains. All of it, all the time. I wish I would have gotten like a whole pamphlet about the growing pains. And I don't just mean physical growing pains. I don't just mean menstrual cycle growing pains. I mean spiritual growing pains. I mean identical growing, identity growing pains. I mean lost growing pains. People tend, we tend to try and identify ourselves or let the world identify us. There's not really an in-between, and it's very hard to let God identify you at our age. And as easy, it, it's a lot easier said than done at our age. Um, I also think communication is huge. Like slowing down, me and my mom, uh, I have a therapist. I love my therapist. I would uh, give everybody a therapist if I could. And she, uh, her name was Kat, and she said, okay, me and my mom are really, really struggling. We were butting heads all the time, and she said, I want you to slow down, and we'd start doing these things called I feel statements. And your I feel statements, you'll look at your mom, or you look at your person you're butting head with, you go, I feel blank. This is what you feel. You say nothing until the other person finishes. Then you say, okay, I hear you say this, that way you're reciprocating what you've heard, and I feel this way. That way it stops you from, because me and my mom, I, can, I know we go, we just bring each other's levels up, and it's never any well. So when you slow down and say, I feel this, and I hear you say this, I hear you means everything to 
people at our age. We never, we don't feel heard. And that's really hard. I really think that we're growing up in a generation that has never had to like deal with some of the stuff that we do today. I think it's really hard to grow up in our generation and identity and confidence we lack in. I think um, a deep, like putting God first is hard because from staying up forever finishing homework while dealing with school drama, while dealing with home drama, while dealing with everything that's going to your body that you're growing is hard. And I think grace, grace is really necessary at our age because we don't know who we are yet. We don't know what we're doing yet. And there's a lot of people trying to identify us and there's a lot, of, there's an agenda of the enemy trying to identify us. And Grace and clarity is very hard to find. And so just slowing down and having the communication of, okay, I feel this and I hear you saying this and just an abundance of grace and instilling a confidence in girls that is not very present. Instilling a a confidence in the fact of just like being able to come and be, ah, I don't forgot the word, but like stand up for yourself in situations, affirmative about who you are and would you instill that confidence in your daughters and in the people you're uh, ministering to? It helps them stand firm in their identity when everybody around them tries to identify them. So when you instill this confidence, when you instill the Jesus-like confidence, when you instill Psalms and Proverbs and these Bible verses into them, and that confidence, they have the power to say, okay, this is who I am. So the identity of the world, the world does not get to identify myself, identify me. The world does not get to claim me. I am Jesus. I belong to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I know my place in the kingdom of heaven. And because of this confidence that these strong, powerful women before me have instilled in me, I can say this is who I am. And I think that is the biggest thing in our generation. Oh, yeah. Standing ovation. Absolutely. That was incredible. I, uh, and you know, that's why we do events like this. That's why these events yeah. exist, because how can we instill that confidence into the generation coming behind us if we lack it ourselves? And I love what you said about having conversation. I think when we think of conversation or communication, we think talking, but majority of communication is listening. And so I'm going to pray for us because our time is up for this panel. Can you just make some noise for this amazing panel? All the sessions are great, but this has been tremendous. I'm going to pray for us as we close, because we have some stuff to give away. We have a game to play. Um, but I want to pray for us that what, not only will we uh, recognize the wonder in the season that we're in and not despise small beginnings, but trust God to take us farther, but also that he'll help us to be confident so that we can be an example to the coming generation. Can we pray, ladies? Lord, we love you and we thank you so much that you've met with us, Father God, through the testimony of your women, of your daughters that you love. I thank you, Father, that you have seen each and every woman on this platform through so many different seasons. But Father God, I thank you that because we're not dead, you're not done, that there is yet more ahead for us, there's more inside of us to do. And Lord God, I thank you for every woman in the room, Father, who might be in a season where they're not quite sure what's going on, Father, or maybe they think that they have it uh, pegged and they know exactly why it's happening, but I thank you, Father, that that the things that we, uh, the foolish things confound the wise, Father God. You you understand things that we can't see, and we see it one way, but I pray, Father God, that we would not struggle with you, that we would not strive with you, but that we would sit back and let you be King of kings and Lord of lords, and let you lead us and guide us through every valley over every mountain. I pray, Father God, that you would instill confidence in your daughters this weekend, Lord God, that we can go and be a light, Father, in the darkness, and show you your love and your mercy and your grace to the women around us and especially the generation that's coming up behind us. And I thank you for all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Y'all-